Cutting up 3D files. This is a must have skill if you're trying to break out into the cosplay or prop making side of 3D printing. But typically, most users only know how to make these very simple straight line plane cuts. Now you can get pretty creative with this, but it's still very limiting and time consuming. In this video, I wanna show you guys this cool new method I've been tinkering around with in Mesh Mixer, a completely free 3D software you can download and modify files with. And hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have a couple new tools under your belt in order to cut up 3D files almost any way you want. Let's get started. So like I was saying, the good old plane cut, you can drop a 3D file into things like Mesh Mixer or 3D Model or Builder or whatever, or Tinkercad, and you can make a butcher's block cut and break up any file. Now that's great for swords and props and stuff that you can just fill and sand back down, but what if you want to print something a little more complex? Now, I didn't know this method when I printed this whole chest plate for my Iron Man suit. This is one solid file. I can go and drop the file for this chest plate in the mesh mixer, select it, hit separate shells, and nothing happens. There's no other uh, polygons or objects in this chest plate to come out. It would be great if I could separate the chest from the shoulders or traps, but that just isn't how this thing was modeled. And unfortunately, not all 3D models are created equally. Modelers do things very different ways from each other. So while modeler A might have separated it here, modeler B didn't. As some of you already know, I've already began plans of printing a brand new Mark 85 suit. I'm retiring the Mark 85 that's behind me, and I'm gonna be printing a whole new file set. With that comes a lot of modifications to the file set. I'm actually using the Mark 85 from Joe Props 3D and his file set is beautiful. However, there are a lot of modifications I wanna make to it. And after playing around with Blender for way too long, that Blender is a completely free program. It's awesome to use. I just don't understand it enough. And it has a knife cut feature. I just couldn't get it to work the right way. And I just figured there had to be an easier way. Now, if you know how to do that in Blender, that's more power to you. That's totally fine. It's not something I know at this point, but I found a very easy way to do this in Mesh Mixer. So let's take a look. Okay, so for this, I'm gonna literally show you what I was doing in Mesh Mixer with these new Mark 85 Iron Man files. And again, you can apply this to really any project you're working on. First up, let's look at the chest. Now, Joe modeled this differently than the DO3D one. So if I just go and select it, hit edit, and select separate shells, it's automatically gonna break it up into two pieces. That's great and perfect. Uh, the chest plate is now one piece, we all know that. And then there's this collar part. Now I wanted to separate this into three different sections. I wanted to have the traps over here, left and right, and then cut out this little, little centerpiece. But right here, I can just make a very simple plane cut through this and that's all fine and simple. I don't need to worry about that. But let's look at the back. And for this new project, I wanted to cut out this little triangular V-shaped thing. Now I could sit here and do one, two, three, 15 plane cuts and try to round out the edges and get it as close to perfect as possible. That sounds like a nightmare. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is first and foremost, go over to edit and hit generate face groups. This is gonna select the smoother, um, you know, angle separated edges of the model. It's, it has to do with the vertices of the model. Don't worry about it. Click it, hit it once and you're gonna to wanna to try to get it to have as many different colors as possible. You can drop the angle threshold, don't drop it down too low. This is perfect. I, the part I wanna cut out is a different color than everything else, we're good to go. Now, from there, I'm gonna go over to select and make sure, just leave everything how it is. I'm gonna double click on this purple section and it should auto fill and highlight that entire area. Now, it's gonna give me a couple options. We're gonna to go to edit and we're gonna hit extract. What that's gonna do, it's gonna extract that face group and make a copy of it. Now, if I go over to offset, you can see it has selected the entire face group of that part, a perfect clone of it. Now, uh, we actually discovered this on the Twitch stream the other night. While playing around with that, if you select normal, it'll kind of start to mess with the, uh, the angles of it, but if you do flat, it actually flattens out the entire shape. I think this could be cool for uh, people doing foam work and like EVA foam um, or even Pepicura, but we're not worried about that right now. We're gonna select offset and it's gonna make a perfect copy of it. So just pull that out as far as possible. Now it's still attached to the back. Again, go to edit and hit separate shells and it's broken that model, that shape away from the back. 
Now, this has no thickness. This is just the face of the part. This is unprintable, but we can extrude it. So again, you're gonna go back to it. You're gonna select it, double click it, hit edit and go to extrude. Now, this is gonna make it thicker or thinner and I wanna keep the face preserved. So I'm gonna drag this slider and you can make it thicker or thinner. Now, normal 3D models, two, three millimeters. So we're gonna drag this back to whatever. You can type in whatever you want, but that seems thick enough. Hit accept. And now we have an exact copy of that shape. I can move this around. I can do whatever I want. I can export this if I want. That's totally fine. So I'm gonna leave this here, but how are we gonna go and cut out the shape now? I have the clone of the part. Now I wanna cut out that uh, the section from the back itself. We're gonna go and do the exact same thing. We're gonna go to select. We're gonna double click it. We're gonna go to edit. We're gonna go to extract, but I'm not gonna move it yet. I'm gonna leave it right there, barely extracted, hit accept. And then while it's still selected, go back to extrude. Now what I'm gonna do is look on the inside and I'm gonna extrude this part all, it does not matter, just extrude it all the way through. Hit accept. Now I've just modified that, you know, now it looks weird as heck. But remember, we can break that apart. Go to separate shell. Now we have the back and that V. They're intersecting with each other. And some of you probably already know where I'm going with this. The order in which you select the parts is very important. I am now going to delete A from B, or sorry, I'm gonna delete B from A. I wanna leave the back plate, select it first, hold shift, and then click the other part. Make sure you do it in that order. And now it's gonna give me an option, Boolean the difference. Click it. Now, there are a bunch of sliders that are gonna pop up. You shouldn't have to mess with any of them. I haven't messed with any of them. Feel free to play with this however you want. I don't know what most of them mean. Just hit accept. I have now successfully cut out that part. And then if I take this other little back plate piece and move it back into its proper position, it is a perfect fit. Not bad, huh? Now, if you know anything about Mesh Mixer or 3D models, when you start doing collision interfaces and annihilations and deleting all this stuff, it's gonna leave some weird remnants floating around. You can see all these little point dots here that are just floating in space. You don't need to worry about those. You can just go and delete those as you feel uh, fit. Um, I would also suggest running it through an analysis and an inspector. They, it is gonna generate some errors, but Mesh Mixer is pretty strong at repairing a lot of that stuff. So go ahead and repair it, let it do its job. And it says there are still some errors. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, you can go and export this, that's totally fine. And you're gonna have the back plate here and then you're gonna have this other little panel. Like I was able to perfectly extract that piece and now I can print this back plate and that part and theoretically it'll fit together. But with all things with 3D printing, some assembly will be required. They might not fit perfectly, but that's why we have soldering irons and sandpaper and Dremels. We'll get it to fit. Now, this isn't gonna work with every single face or every single polygon you can mess with in Mesh Mixer. Um, it is gonna be a very trial by fire thing. You might have to get creative with cutting up certain edges and just uh, scaling parts up and scaling them down so they collide in the right way. And then at the end of the day, using the brush and just hitting delete to cut up some more of those areas. But this lets you extract certain shapes from other parts. Now we figured out the back, but what if we move down here to the ab plates? Now, Joe has already gone and separated the abs into a couple sections, but I just don't like how these are cut up. I want the abs to be five completely separate different pieces, and then I would like to combine the lower back with this little side part of the abs over here. I think that would make it much better for uh, wearing it and putting it on. So how about we start chopping up the abs and playing around with more ways to kind of cut this up? Now, right off the bat, just for symmetry's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and mirror all of the parts that are missing. Uh, that's kind of the point of doing this stuff um, to make sure they all fit into the proper spots. Okay, first up, let's cut out this upper ab part. Uh, I, I want a left side, a right side, and this center ab to be its own piece. However, I am planning ahead and thinking that, uh, you know what, I really don't want this long spike part here to just be part of this ab. So. I think in this case, I would, I'm just gonna do a plane cut and I'm gonna drag a line right up with this detail line here and just make the cut and separate this into three sections. It'll be better for wearing, that's all simple to do. Okay, now I have the left, middle, and right side. This center ab is cut apart and there is a new little detail line right there. I'm not worried about it, no one's even gonna notice. 
So now I can combine these two sides and now I have a whole right side ab, upper ab section and I can do the same over here, combine, and I have the whole uh, upper left side. So I'm done with these sections. I can go ahead and export these, but in this case, I'm just gonna move them off to the side so we can continue to see what I'm doing. And now we have two out of the five ab pieces cut up exactly how we want them. So now it's time to cut up this center ab section. If I go over here, hit separate shells, nothing happens, but I want these to be in three more pieces. And by deleting and cutting out these three pieces, it's gonna free up the sides right here. And that's exactly what I want. So then I can combine them with the lower back. So there's two big cuts I'm gonna need to make. I'm gonna have to delete this entire bottom section here this whole blue area, that's gonna be the first part to come out and that will free up the left and right sides. And then when I'm done with that, I'm gonna then go and delete the middle green one and that'll free up the, uh, the top ab part. And that'll give me three parts in two cuts, not bad. So let's start with the bottom one first. We're gonna to go to select, double click it, edit, extract. Now we're gonna make our copy first and then extrude it. And then we're gonna, we'll do two point, negative 2.5 millimeters. How about that? Boom, that's a good thickness, I'm okay with that. Hit accept, separate the shells. Now I have my perfect copy of that lower ab. Rinse and repeat, extract, extrude. Now, a little tip. You can see right here that that extruded part isn't quite covering the detail lines. It's not, it's not perfect. But what we can do is go over to edit, we can separate the shells again, and then we can select the big part, the part we just made, not the abs themselves, the big part we're gonna to use to delete, we can actually hit T or go to tra edit transform. And we're gonna actually scale this whole thing up. Make sure uniform scaling is on. So it's at 100% right now. I'm gonna do 1.02 and it's gonna make it just a little bit bigger. So it overlaps and overhangs those areas. And then we're gonna go ahead and delete it the same way we did before. Select the abs first, then the other part, Boolean difference. And it's gonna cut it out dang near perfectly. This is what I was talking about with having to play around with some scale and positioning, because there might be some artifacts you might have to delete, but that worked flawlessly. Now, this is still combined, separate the shells. Now my left side and my right side are perfectly freed up. That's exactly what I wanted to do. So now I can select the lower back, this left side, this right side. I'll even select these little riblet details. Combine them. Oh, missed these ones up here too. And now this lower ab part is all one piece that I can export and print as a whole section, just like that. So the last thing we need to do is now break up this center ab section. And I, I think the easiest way to do this is probably just delete the purple and that'll free up this uh, uh, little overlapping part up here and the bottom green part. So let's do that real quick. Okay, so after a little bit and a lot of bit more trial and error, I was finally able to get it to separate by a mixture of uh, going through with the brush, selecting little areas, deleting them slowly, and just getting the bottom ab, uh, the middle ab to overlap in just the perfect way, hitting delete until it didn't give me some errors. Um, this can happen with 3D models. We're literally just destroying, deleting parts of the models as they overlap. There's gonna be some trial and error. Do not be afraid of it. Also, don't forget that you can use things like Mesh Mixer, the Sculpt feature, Volume, um, Smoothing, Shrink Smooth. You can use all of these little features to go back and just slowly clean up parts of the model. Um, it takes a little bit of trial and error in order to learn how to do that type of stuff, but it can really help you clean up some little areas. But with just some experimenting, sitting here for a little bit and just really doing the work, I now have five completely separate printable ab pieces, all with relatively the same thickness. I now have the lower back exactly where I want it to be in the proper shape. And I have all these extra little pieces that I can decide to combine or print or just do whatever I want with all by just, you know, doing the work. 3D printing is not an exact science. You guys are gonna have to get in there sometimes and mess with the files. Um, yeah, you can message the model makers or the websites and sometimes they might make some modifications for you, but realistically, being able to do things like this just unlocks so many more possibilities in the hobby itself. Now, this was only a very quick example and I am still learning how to do this stuff. I am still learning how to mess with this and the possibilities that uh, Mesh Mixer, I almost said Blender, um, the possibilities that Mesh Mixer gives 
gives you, it's a very powerful tool that people sleep on a lot. And I am gonna continue to try to learn how to use Blender and maybe there is an easier way to do it. But for now, this filled that exact spot I needed. I needed to separate the parts and this was able to provide. So hopefully in this, you guys learn something new about just how to operate Mesh Mixer, how to drop parts in there and move them around, how to extrude some faces. Um, and it hopefully will open up more possibilities for cuts and armor. Uh, being able to separate a bunch of pieces and make them articulate is just, it's gonna be so cool for building my new Mark 85 over here. And just, it help, it changes how I can approach future cosplays and plans for just building stuff. If you did find this video helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. This way you can stay up to date on all the videos I have coming out and you never miss a thing. But I think that's gonna do it for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching and you have a good day.